I believe that you have the power to grow the largest possible podcast audience, an audience that you never thought was possible. But I also know that it's not as easy as sometimes it's made out to be. I'm Mark Asquith, CEO and co-founder of Rebel Base Media, where we make podcasting technology, including the podcast hosting, analytics, and marketing platform, Captivate.fm. And today I'm going to talk to you about two concepts that I believe if you utilize them, if you learn them, and if you design upon them, will allow you to build that audience that you so wish you had for your podcast. It's not difficult. It just requires patience and a little dedication. Let me introduce you to how you can build a genuinely engaged podcast audience. The two concepts that I mentioned, the podcast discoverability triangle and the listener acquisition flow, are all designed really to help you to understand how you can get more genuine listeners. That's the aim of the game here. The reason that I know about these things, the reason that I've developed these two core concepts is because this is what I do. I do podcast work every single day. I'm the CEO of Rebel Base Media. I make Captivate.fm. I make productivity podcast websites, Podcast Success Academy, and I host a three times per week podcast education a podcast called the Podcast Accelerator. So this is what I do. I've seen so many of the same problems come up so very often with podcasters from across the world, from different backgrounds, in different niches, different genres, but they all have the same problems. So in this session, we're going to discuss the content hamster wheel. We're going to discuss the podcast discoverability triangle, and we're going to talk about designing your listener acquisition flow. And of course, what the heck does any of this mean? First up, the content hamster wheel, which is kind of shorthand for podcast marketing. It's what we usually do as a podcaster right now to market our show. And it can be summed up in that little line at the bottom of this slide here, which is, hey, I have a podcast. Go and subscribe right now. Let me talk you through this. This is how I have analyzed a typical best case podcast marketing cycle. A best case. What we tend to do is, pre-release of an episode, we will tease that episode. And we, you know, we'll maybe give people an idea what's coming up, why they should listen, maybe put some pull quotes on there, or maybe a little audiogram on Instagram or Twitter. And then when we release the episode, what we do is we do a heck of a lot of heavy promotion. That's to say that when we release the episode, we really, really go out of our way to promote it on all of our social media channels. We pop it on our stories. We email our lists about it. And we do that really just that week of the episode. And then what we do is if you look at the bottom of this slide, we repeat that per episode. It's a cycle. We pat ourselves on the back and we say, this is great. We've marketed that episode. Now we're going to go and tease the next one. And then when that next one comes out, we go ahead and we heavily promote that one and then we pat ourselves on the back again. We go and repeat it. We tease the next episode. And then what we tend to do is over on the right-hand side, we maybe, maybe recycle our episode marketing by maybe adding things like repeatable tweets or repeatable Instagram posts or repeatable Facebook posts that maybe go out periodically every now and again just to remind people that this episode that we've released exists. So... This is essentially the podcast marketing that I see every single podcaster doing, and this is all that they do. Now, interestingly, if you look at the bottom right here under the word future, we've got, again, we've got that tagline, haven't we? We've got that kind of call to action, which is, hey, I have a podcast, go and subscribe right now. Because what we tend to tell people to do is we only ask for one of two things when we are promoting our episodes. We ask them to go and listen to the episode. So throughout this cycle of marketing here, we ask people to go and listen to our episode. Or ordinarily, what so many podcasters do is they will actually go ahead and say, go and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. But there's a problem with this marketing. You see, this podcaster, like you, like me, the problem with this is that we measure our downloads but we ask for listeners, but our calls to action 
are to get people to subscribe and become subscribers. So this doesn't feel right. We measure downloads. We want listeners. But we ask for subscribers. There's something disparate there. It doesn't, it's not cohesive. But there's a bigger problem. The podcast listener. Do you know what the sad truth is? Listeners really do not care about us until we make them. We can distill this problem right down. We can actually really, really make this very clear. When we are marketing, we ask way too much, way too soon. A transient tweet that someone sees in their Twitter stream says, hey, I've got a new podcast episode out. Go and subscribe now in your podcast app of choice or go and listen to the episode. It's too much, too soon. In fact, we're a little bit like the car salesman. Imagine walking onto a car lot and someone bounding up to you. And instead of trying to sell you the car and get to know you and understand what your needs are, no, no, no. Imagine them coming up to you and saying, hey, let's go and sign the paperwork right now. You would run a mile because you'd only just turned up. You had only just turned up. It's too much too soon. And this is what we do with our podcast. But also, let's look at this word subscribe. This is research from Edison. Edison carry out research in all manner of industries, and podcasting is one of them. In their most recent Infinite Dial, the Podcast Consumer Report, one of the biggest reasons that people don't subscribe to podcasts is because they believe that they have to pay to subscribe to podcasts. Because what else do we subscribe to? Disney Plus, we subscribe to Netflix, we subscribe to memberships, we subscribe to Grey's Boxes, we subscribe to deliveries, to Amazon Prime. These are all things, of course, that we have to pay for. So using the word subscribe in its very nature puts across the fact that we might have to pay for podcasts. But we know this isn't true. Your podcast is free. So when we put all of this together, when we put everything that we've discussed right here together to define that problem, it becomes clear that amongst the almost one million podcasts in the world. This is going up at a rate of around around 30 to 40,000 per month. Out of all of these podcasts, we want to generate new listeners. We want to generate genuine listeners. So your marketing is just not enough. Your marketing, I'm afraid, is just not enough. But we can learn something that will help us with this, the listener acquisition flow. Let's get off this content hamster wheel and let's achieve this goal of giving people enough of us at the right time to cultivate loyalty, recurring listens and advocacy. So let's look at this listener acquisition flow. I posit that there are five stages to acquiring a brand new podcast fan. These stages are as follows. The lurker, the explorer, the listener, the subscriber, and finally, up at the top right-hand side of this slide, the fan. The challenge is, we try and acquire new listeners here at subscriber stage because we tell people, go and subscribe to my podcast. Spend time listening to it even though you might not know who I am or why you should listen. So what we do is we ask people to subscribe because that's the only call to action, really, that we can think of as podcasters. The challenge here, of course, is that listeners aren't there. New listeners are right down here at the bottom. They're lurking. They're lurking. They don't know you. They don't know me. They don't know why they should listen to your podcast or why it's valuable. They're lurkers. They're new listeners and they're lurking. And their time is valuable. Their time is valuable. Okay. And we have to respect that. Time is the only thing as we know that we're not getting back. So let's define each one of these types of prospect, each type of listening prospect a little further. Starting at the bottom left hand side, the lurker is someone that has kind of heard of you. Someone that maybe knows you through proxy 
So maybe someone that knows an entrepreneur that you follow, maybe someone that knows someone whose podcast you've been on or whose webinar you've been on or whose YouTube channel you guested on or someone who you did a guest blog post for or just someone that they see on Twitter or Instagram interacting with you every now and again. They are lurkers. They kind of know of you, but they aren't really interested yet in what you have to offer. The explorer is someone that has seen enough of you that they are ready to sample your show. They are willing to give a little bit of their time to see whether what you have on your podcast is up their street. Is it for them? And these are the people that we normally alienate because they're ready to sample our show. But what do we do? We say, go and listen to this huge 45-minute episode or go and subscribe and listen to every episode forever. They're only exploring, all right? It's too much too soon. The next person in this listener acquisition flow, the next, next type of prospective listener to your podcast is the listener. This is a person that isn't a subscriber. They aren't a fan. And we shouldn't stop here. The listener listens, but not always. You're one of many shows. doesn't matter if they miss an episode. Maybe they only listen to the topics that capture their attention. You are not their number one must-not-miss podcast. Further up, we move to being a subscriber, someone that listens to most episodes, eight out of ten episodes, and through choice, they would rather listen to you above very many other people. You are one of their top podcasts, and they subscribe to you, not just in the technical sense, but to your belief system, to your approach, to how you do things. They listen to most of what you do, and it's through choice. And then finally, of course, we have the fan. The ultimate fan who never misses an episode, shares everything that you do, and advocates everything. Will tell the world about you and maybe even, maybe even pay. Maybe even give you some money on Patreon or buy one of your products or services. Buy your course. Grab your lead magnet. So, listener acquisition flow, made up of five types of prospective listener. What we tend to do is we ask people to subscribe too early, when really what we need to do is understand that these people are lurkers. New listeners are lurking. And what we have to do is define a way of stepping people up from being a lurker to an explorer, from being an explorer who listens to one, maybe two of your episodes, into a listener who listens to 40, 50% and is starting to get to know you. And then a subscriber who listens to most of your episodes completely through choice and subscribes not only to your content and technically doesn't just subscribe because they press the subscribe button, but someone who subscribes to your belief system, your way of thinking. And then, of course, we need to turn people into a fan, someone who never misses an episode, who shares everything that you do, advocates and even buys your stuff. Now, this you'll notice if you're into marketing, if you're a marketer, if, you, if you're in business and you've explored any level of marketing, you'll notice that this looks suspiciously like a value ladder. Very suspiciously like a value ladder. And the value ladder is something that all marketers understand. And it's something that basically works through Marketing 101, which is to get people to know you, to like you, and to trust you. So our goal is to have something just at the cusp of the very next level, just something between lurker and explorer, between explorer and listener, between listener and subscriber, and between subscriber and fan, to entice that person to take the next step. And you know what? This is something that's actually really easy to design for you as a podcaster. Here's how we do it. In order to progress people through this process, in order to get listeners to become lurkers, to become explorers, to become listeners, subscribers, and then fans, this is how we step them up through that process. For the lurker, we get them involved with a 90-second trailer. Now, there's a reason that it's a 90-second trailer. The reason for that is that it's not too much time 
to ask them to invest. When was the last time that you went to the movies and saw a movie without seeing a trailer? How excited do we get when brand new movies come out? Even things that we don't recognize we would normally watch, but when we see a trailer, wow, okay, this looks quite interesting. Or, alternatively, no, 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 I've seen the trailer, it's not for me, I haven't wasted time on it. This is where we get the lurkers. We have to give them a podcast trailer, and I'm going to come to that in just one second. But, throughout that trailer, as a call to action, what we have to do is we have to curate content. So we get people up from being a lurker into being an explorer by curating content. So we can say something like this. Hey, this is Mark Asquith, host of the Podcast Accelerator. You can expect my show to come out every single week, three times a week. Every episode will be less than 10 minutes of podcast education. And guess what? You can get it in every podcast app that supplies podcasts. And if you're new to the show, I recommend that you go and listen to episode 27, which we cover how to build your own podcast trailer. Now, the reason that we do that, that little last bit there that I mentioned, that, that, that little curation of the content, go and listen to episode 27. The way that we do this is that we look at our download analytics. So you log into your hosting platform like Captivate.fm, log into your podcast host, go to the Captivate.fm or your podcast hosting analytics section. You look at what the most downloaded episode is. And then you continue to re-record your 90-second trailer every quarter to redo this curation. Because if episode 50 is the thing that your listeners, your audience really respond to, you can say in your brand new trailer, hey, if you're new to the show, go and listen to episode 50 because it's the one that people get the most value from right now. So when people are exploring, we have to tell them where to explore. We have to give them a map. And we give them a ma the map by curating the content. So rather than saying, here is my trailer, here's everything you can expect, and essentially saying to them, off you go, go and find an episode. No, what we do is we say to them, to become an explorer, go and listen to this one episode. Go and listen to this one episode, which I know you will like. Next, when they've listened to that one episode, so they're at the explorer stage right now, we step them up with relatable segments, involvement, and behind-the-scenes access. So what we do here is we push them through to our Instagram and say, hey, if you want insight or early access to behind the scenes of how I record the Podcast Accelerator, I very often post snippets of that on my Instagram story. Go and check it out, at Mr. Asquith. Go and join me over there, and we can converse. We can talk about that over there. Or the relatable segments. Think about a talk show or a radio show, any kind of old school game show. They've all got segments to them because everyone has a favorite type of content. I run a Star Wars show. It's called Spark of Rebellion. I love Star Wars. In case you didn't realize that my company was called Rebel Base Media, I didn't love Star Wars. So in my Star Wars show, we have some segments. We have the news. We've got the review and discussion. And we've got the random spotlight. So many people only tune in for one of those segments. So rather than making an explorer choose whether or not to listen to the next 45-minute episode, what we can do is if we design our podcast to have segments, they can then relate to the fact that, wow, okay, when I listened to this first episode that, that Mark recommended, I really enjoyed the random spotlight. So I'm just going to check a few more episodes out and see what the random spotlights are on those episodes. I might not listen to the full episode, but I'm going to try more than one episode. And then we involve them, okay? So we make them listeners by involving them. Hey, welcome to episode 27. If you're brand new to the show, let me know what you think. Do you have any questions on this episode? Hit me up on Twitter, at Mr. Asquith. And then when they send you their questions, which believe me, they will do if you ask them to. Give them a clear place to do that and they will ask you questions. In order to make them a listener and then a subscriber, what do we do? We just involve them. So someone's listening to a few different episodes and they finally take the, the plunge. They, they tweet me with a question. They tweet, tweet you with a question. What do you do? You tweet them back and you say, hey, on episode 40, 
I actually answer this question just for you and I give you a shout out. And this is how we give people access and move them from being a listener to a subscriber. We give them the involvement so that you can say back to them on Twitter, back to them on Instagram, back to them via email. Hey, I covered this for you. I did it on episode 40. Here's the link. Go and listen to it. And then they become more subscription oriented because you've you've brought them in. You've become friends with them. You've built a relationship with them. And what you do is you continue to do that. Hey, look, you know, if you need any more on this question, again, all you need to do is reply to this email or all you need to do is tweet me again and I'll cover it again on episode 42. I'm very happy to do that. But here is the kicker. When people start to listen to more and more episodes, what we have to do to make them into a subscriber is we have to give them personal communications. We have to give them extra access. We have to bring them together in a meetup space, okay? And what that means is this. I've devised something that I call a presence promise, a presence promise, a promise to be present somewhere at a specific time, okay? So, On every one of the podcast episodes, what I will do is I will say, come along if you have any questions, let's get some face time on my free coaching every Friday and it without fail, it is every Friday for 30 minutes at 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. UK and 8 a.m. Pacific. I turn up and do my coaching. This is a presence promise that when people listen to my episodes, they hear about and they inevitably turn up at some point. I've been doing this now for years. I've done it for about four years. Every Friday for 30 minutes, free podcast coaching. That's my presence promise. So when someone's listening, I turn them into a subscriber by saying, if you've got any questions that you want answering live, we can have some face time on this. Let's do it. It's free. Let's just do it. It's my time and it's your time. Let's go ahead and do that together. And they become a subscriber then because they know me. They get to understand what I'm about. And remember what I said earlier, this is about getting people to subscribe to your belief system, your ethics, and the way you do business, not just technically clicking the subscribe button, okay? When you have them there, this is when you convert them into a fan. This is when you treat them like the queen. This is when you tell them, hey, how are the kids doing? How was the operation? How is work? I know you were struggling with this thing. Did you get that resolved? This is when you start to remember them. This is when you become truly friends with them and they become fans of yours. And this is the only point at which you can ask them for something. So when someone becomes a fan, then you've earned their trust. They know you, they like you, they trust you and you can start to ask them for things, okay? Like, do you want to donate a book on Patreon or five books or 10 books per month? Do you want to buy this thing? Do you want to subscribe to my email list? Only when they're a fan can you do that. And the way you move people up from being a subscriber to a fan is you genuinely become a person for them. You remember, I know many of my audience members and I know some of the challenges they have in their life. I know roughly where they live in terms of area geographically in the world. I know their wives' names, their husband names, their partner's names. I know what they do for a living. And then they become fans, all right? So this is a little old school. This is not digital marketing per se. This is old school marketing, okay? And it really, really works. Now, we're going to revisit this listener acquisition flow in a second. But for now, I want you to remember everything that I've said. Go back and maybe review it. But I'm going to introduce you now to the second concept, the podcast discoverability triangle. And then we're going to bring the two together. So the podcast discoverability triangle is a huge marketing opportunity. And this is what it is. Essentially, there are three problems when it comes to your podcast being discovered. Up at the top left, there are people who have got no idea what a podcast is. Up at the top right, there are people who love podcasts but have got no idea who you are. And then right at the bottom, you've got people who, honestly, they don't like what you do enough to share it. So you're never going to attract their friends, their peers, their colleagues, their network, okay? So there are three types of people and three types of marketing opportunity here for podcasters. And this concept is something that I want you to add to a familiar marketing concept that we talked about earlier. It's that cycle, that cyclical marketing process that we go through every single week or every single episode release where we tease the release for a little while. We'll do some heavy promotion on the release day or the release week, and then we'll recycle those tweets, those Facebook posts and those Instagram posts. 
But I posit that actually we should be creating four tiers of podcast marketing. The multi-tiered podcast marketing stack. Tier number one, right at the top, is segments, marketable segments. Imagine for my podcast, Spark of Rebellion, the Star Wars show, I can very easily say I'm going to run a marketing campaign based solely on segment number three of my show, which is the random spotlight. And I can run a a, a year-long marketing campaign about why R2-D2 is better than BB-8 or why DO is not as good as C-3PO. And these are random spotlights, so I can theme them out or the review and discussion. If people want to know more about the books that we've reviewed, I can create a marketing campaign based just on those review segments. So what we do is we target people based on their likes and dislikes. And sure, we can get more advanced with this with Facebook marketing, creating lookalike audiences, digging more into retargeting, like the tactics are very deep. We could get deep, deep into that. But for now, I want you to consider, could you create a marketing campaign based on different segments to your show that runs consistently? And that you tell people about all of the time. Hey, did you know that I've got a segment that is, you know, how how to do X every week, a tip of the week, an actionable takeaway of the week, a recipe of the week. And it's only five minutes out of a 45-minute show. So go and listen to that bit. Because once you've got them listening, they're going to listen to a little more. Next, tier number two is the episode-level stuff. It's this stuff that we talked about before. Okay, that still has to exist, but it's now tier two. We do that every single week anyway. But then tier three, we need to run marketing campaigns consistently to people that already listen to podcasts. So again, Facebook is a great way to do this. Create some lookalike audiences for people that listen to podcasts in your niche and target them with, hey, did you know this podcast exists? And here's where you go to listen. And then tier number four, what is a podcast? There are so many people that love your subject matter, but that don't know about podcasts. So let's use the Star Wars example again. I know so many people love Star Wars, but have got no idea about a podcast. They don't know how to listen to it. So what do I do? I create a marketing campaign, that tier four, what is a podcast education marketing campaign that targets people, and again, let's use Facebook as the example, targets people that love Star Wars, that follow Anthony Daniels, that love Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford and George Lucas, that register in their likes that they like the Clone Wars and they like New Hope and Empire and The Force Awakens and Phantom Menace. And what I do is I target those guys with, hey, do you want to come and join the discussion about why Jar Jar Binks is the most underused Star Wars character? And they think, well, wait a second, this is content that I like, but what's this podcast thing? And all I do is I say to them, all, all you need to know is that we talk about this content here and by clicking this button, on-demand audio, which is kind of like Netflix, will appear on your phone in two clicks. We don't even need to tell them what a podcast is. We just need to say, look, you love Star Wars. You probably want to get involved in this. Click these two links and you will hear the audio. They don't care what a podcast is. They just want that on-demand audio whenever they want it, okay? So the multi-tiered podcast marketing stack is something that we could spend an hour or two on just of its own volition, but I want you to consider now, how can you implement this four-tiered marketing approach for your podcast? How can you market segments of your show on a consistent basis? How can you implement that weekly podcast marketing process that we talked about earlier? How can you implement tier three, Brand level, who am I? You already listen to podcasts, but do you know about my podcast marketing? And then tier number four, you like what I do in terms of content and topic, but you don't know about podcasts. How can you implement those marketing tactics and those strategies in particular? But what about calls to action? All of the marketing that we've talked about here leads us to this. It leads us to the point that we made right at the beginning, which is we want to encourage people to become explorers. Currently, they are lurkers. They maybe know about you. We need to get them to take some action. We need to get them listening to something. But we can't ask them to listen to a 45-minute episode or a two-hour episode or to subscribe to everything that we do because they don't know us well enough yet. So what we do 
is every call to action throughout all of this marketing points to the trailer. Go and listen to the 90 second trailer. Hey, today I've got this guest on my show. If you like what this guest does, go and listen to the episode trailer and then pick up episode 42. Why do people listen to trailers? Because they want to know what's going on. Now, I would posit that you only actually need one trailer, a show-level trailer, 90 seconds long, that will tell you exactly what to expect from the podcast. And every call to action that we make, whether I'm guesting on podcasts, whether I'm doing webinars, whether I'm on Twitter, whether I'm promoting episodes, or whether I'm in person giving business cards out, I should always be telling people to go and listen to my podcast trailer, okay? Because then we can design the trailer and the episodes to move people from being a lurker to an explorer, to a listener, to a subscriber, to a fan. But if we try and inject people too far up this process, we run a big risk of alienating them because we're asking too much too soon. Where do we use this trailer? The short answer is everywhere. So I use this on my Twitter. It is pinned to my Twitter Okay, that's a Captivate player. It's embedded directly into the top of Twitter. It works. You can listen to that directly in Twitter. And people listen to that. The trailer is actually almost three times, listen to almost three times more than any other episode that I have. Okay, so please use this everywhere. I even have it on the top of my website. The only thing, sure, I've got all the latest episodes, but the first thing people see is the trailer. Okay, the first thing people see is the trailer. It's one minute, 17 seconds long. Because here's the deal. People are people. They are not just downloads, okay? And our goal is to get more genuine listeners. Our goal is to get more genuine listeners. So consider what you can do to design your own marketing around these core concepts. If you need a hand, you can get in touch with me right here around this video. You can get in touch with me right here in the community. Do let me know. And... If you want a trailer format that you can copy, you can just go and borrow the format from this nine unconventional ways to grow your podcast. It's a free ebook that you can use and it has a trailer format in there that you can copy along with nine other ways that you can use to build your podcast audience today. Remember, these are ideas that are intended to help you to grow. You can use the listener acquisition flow, the podcast discoverability triangle and that multi-tiered marketing stack either individually or together. And I want you to design your own marketing strategies around these concepts. And please remember the aim of the game is to keep testing, tweaking and growing. The podcast discoverability triangle and the listener acquisition flow aren't magical concepts. They're ideas that you can use to design and build your own podcast marketing strategies, which in turn, with some time and that dedication, will lead to a much bigger podcasting audience than you ever thought possible, but also to a podcasting audience that is extremely highly engaged. Now, accompanying this video is a link to Captivate.fm that will get you a very special deal on the platform so that right now you can create and grow your own podcast, whether you're starting fresh or moving from another podcast hosting platform. We will be there for you. We will be there to help. And this is just one concept that will help you to grow that genuinely engaged podcast audience. If you need anything, please just let me know. I will always be around to do what I can.